live in the group. It's being live streamed. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, good. Cool. Okay. So welcome. Welcome Andy and welcome everybody else who is either um, watching this on the replay or um, what ends up watching it live and catching this bit later. I don't think anyone's watching straight away. Um, so what's going to happen um, every day in the group is there's going to be a series of uh, what I call laser coaching sessions and all the laser bit really means is that they're short and they're they're relatively focused so it doesn't mean that they're going to be rushed it doesn't mean that we're under time pressure particularly but there's enough time to kind of dig into one thing as you know as um which is as useful as 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 possible and um you know what i'm encouraging people to do and we've already had a conversation andy and i about um you know the, the purpose of the session what i'm encouraging people to do when it's your turn is to you know come with something in mind that would be a good use of our time so kind of showing up with with an idea of, of what would be a useful uh, topic um, for you to get value um, and each of these sessions is also a chance for us to to get to know the members of the group you know that there, there may not be time for every single person in this group to get a coaching session um, but there i will be prioritizing the people who are taking the most action so the reason that andy's here is because he was the first person to put a comment in the group um he was quick out of the blocks and uh, that's cool so I, I wanted to offer the first session um to him so hi andy um who are you and sort of what do you do tell us a little bit about um you know what you're up to in the world uh cheers nick thanks and hi everyone um so i'm um a jazz musician and teacher i'm a guitar player you can probably see and I, I play in two bands i teach in a primary school i teach privately um, but i also do a youtube channel which has been my real passion over the last th three years i'd say something i've really been looking to grow my absolute favorite thing to do other than being on a stage well as important to me is helping others get the same enjoyment i have out of learning the guitar specifically jazz because it's often presented as quite a complicated thing to learn and I think there's ways to make it sort of more accessible and to, to help others um, so I've got a YouTube channel called Jazz Guitar with Andy where I've been uploading videos pretty consistently um, two videos a week around all sort of essential topics with with learning jazz guitar and I've also got a website on the back end of of that and I'm just at this point where I'm putting a lot of time into it. I, lo I love doing it. Um, getting a lot of good feedback from from what I do, from my videos and how I'm engaging with subscribers and, and so forth. But just sort of hitting that sort of block as where to go next. I'd like it to be my main thing, really. I'd like to move away from teaching in primary school, to, um, teaching guitar that is, and also other guitar lessons that I do that aren't related to jazz and just do that one thing so I can be really invested in that. And I suppose my my problem at the minute is really how to, I suppose, deepen that relationship with those people that I interact with, that interact with my videos and how to take that bit further to connect with them, connect with them better. Um, and I started listening to the book that, that Nick suggested and that touches upon a lot of these things about how we connect with our audience and not seeing them necessarily as consumers or, or what we offer is just a you know i'm doing this for money obviously i want to to monetize it but that's not my main motivation my main motivation is the the love of doing it and to to help mm -hmm. others and how to take that maybe that relationship between you know individuals you meet online a bit bit further okay and that deepening of the relationships is that the very heart of what you want to talk about today you think that's the most useful bit of all that? Yeah, I think so. I think so, because I think that would be a good route into being able to, to make more of that aspect of my work, to make it my main thing. Mm. Okay. So uh, and one, one of the things you'll notice about um, when I'm coaching other people or coaching you is that sometimes I'll ask some questions that might sound a little bit dumb, right? And it's because <laughs> I'm, I want to check yeah what i'm hearing is what you're meaning right so when you say um you'd like to deepen relationships what what kind of thing do you have in mind what do you mean 
how, how would you like those relationships to end up being um i suppose a bit more than just kind of a um one-off interaction you know you you get i get interaction from people that regularly come back you know that they they like the videos they like the content and i recognize the name straight away I, you kind of get to know them over over time and what they like and what they don't um and i suppose sometimes you get those sort of more fleeting encounters with people and it's maybe how to to make more of that those those instances you know hmm. so are we talking about how to um be liked more by the audience or are we talking about how to be um trusted more or are we talking about how to make more sales or a bit of all of it or probably a probably a bit of all of it t to be honest yeah yeah i suppose some of that could come down to you know ultimately the what i offer on youtube yes i do make money out of it from donations from ad advert revenue um but i do have a website where i would like to have more products to have and i suppose some of it is also like you know ha having a good rapport with people even just in comment sections on online and then having somewhere they can go on my website where there is something if they want to support me or some additional help with something they could buy something but i suppose with that relationship when it comes to the website and maybe convert into a, a, a sale we're talking about the language i use maybe or mm -hmm. the way i present myself maybe mm -hmm. you know there, there's this offering a lot um of your, of my time and you know knowledge which essentially to to them they get for nothing which I, I don't have a problem with i wouldn't do it otherwise but then it's maybe that i don't know whether there's a contradiction there whether some people don't cross that line then they wouldn't want to then buy something from your site necessarily i don't i don't know it's a bit of a gray line for me okay okay cool so th this is a really common thing and i think it's it will be a really useful topic for other people so I, i'm already hearing things from what you're saying that are cop, uh, sort of popping up in lots of conversations i'm having with with my, with my clients right so um and in fact i was thinking about doing this and i think i will share an audio an additional audio with with the group that i think will be really really useful so it goes into more depth than i'm about to speak about and mm -hmm. i think at least at least one or two people in, in the group will already have heard this audio but um uh it's been so powerful um for me to sort of listen to and go back to and clients have found it really powerful so, so um there's a there's a distinction that um a coach called steve chandler makes um and he he makes this distinction between uh serving people and pleasing people mm. right so pleasing pleasing people is is a useful thing to be able to do as a a very young person you know because obviously um you know babies depend on adults for feeding and, and sort of shelter and being looked after and all that stuff so kind of not <laughs> not pissing off the adults is quite a useful feature for a baby you know because otherwise they'd be left on their own right um and uh, part of what happens as we obviously mature and um, become leaders in our own life or our business or our career or whatever is that that if we very often what happens and by when I say we I mean what I have done and, and yeah, I sure. bet what what most of us have done at some point in varying different ways is to um, make it about pleasing make our interactions about pleasing and not so much about sort of being useful as useful as we possibly can to the people that we're um interacting with and it doesn't just mean as a business it means so so the, the reason i've shared that go givers sell more book is because th that's i love the way it's kind of presenting um that that distinction not only as a kind of idea mm -hmm. but as a way of life right so so i'm sharing this and i, I will share the audio but the, the reason i'm saying that now is because 
this may or may not be obvious in kind of the approach that I use to build to building business, which is there's a community, there's a place where um, people that are roughly interested in my stuff are, and then there's a process that people go through, which is you know they they engage a little bit and then through comments or through a conversation or through something i do for them by sharing something with them or through the content that i share that that they they experience value in other words like i, I do my best to be useful to them right and, and what that means you know by choosing serving rather than pleasing sometimes that means i'd be prepared to 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 choose being useful over being liked by them in the sense that you might give them something challenging to mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. that, that might not be what they want to hear but it's the right information yeah i'm, I'm not talking about deliberately trying to piss people off no, no saying but... like be, being being willing to say the thing that I'm noticing that would be useful to them. Yeah, so I'll give you an I give you an example. I've got a client um, who's also a guitarist. Um, he's a long term client. He he's also got a YouTube channel. He's also building his teaching, and he found that there were some students that he was kind of tolerating that they weren't really practicing. Um, you know, they, they <laughs> week in, week out, it kind of go, well, have you, have you practiced? And they're, oh, no, I haven't. And it would kind of, he'd find himself kind of um, laughing it off or kind of, because he didn't want to lose the, the student, sure. he'd, he'd um, you know, he'd, he'd kind of do what he could to be liked and stay in their good books. And they'd arrive and they'd have long nails and they, they hadn't, you know, obviously like they, 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 all the signs were that they weren't really getting the most of it. And, we had a conversation about this distinction um, and he started to see that actually by, by being prepared to kind of not really confront them, but, but really reflect on like, what is the most useful thing for this particular person that I'm interacting with? Mm. And it might be, well, you know, he said something like, well, I've, I've noticed we've been having lessons for a while and, you know, there's been a few times when I've asked you, have you practiced? And you, you, you said that you haven't. What's going on there? You know, and, and by, by speaking the, his internal experience, potentially like kind of shaking them up a little bit, he found that it was useful. So then he started to create these boundaries um, with, with students. But, but the boundaries aren't there. You know, they're not there to sort of shake them up for the sake of it. It's because ultimately that's the conversation that that student actually needs to have in order to unlock a completely you know a much more powerful relationship with the guitar which is yeah goes against what a lot of people would do because a, stu a student to some is well it's an individual but it's also a regular income and like you say it could upset upset well you could potentially lose a student by challenging them to that. But I've definitely been in that situation plenty of times where, especially with younger students, where the, the practice isn't evident and it it can be quite demoralising from the teacher perspective and from the planning perspective because it, you just waste time planning when they haven't then practised a previous thing and then it just becomes a, you know, a, a rolling problem. So... so... So to bring that back to what you said about, um, you know, deepening those relationships, what are some of the ways that you might be able to build service based relationships with people in YouTube comments, for example, how, how, if you were to, if you were to, to do your best to sort of serve these people in the comments, um, what do you think? might be possible there I'm, I'm not expecting a fully formed answer necessarily but it, it can be useful to ask the question you see? yeah yeah i mean it obviously you, it depends on what sort of comment you get obviously you get some that obviously um i think where i could ask them questions again or it, sometimes it, it could be explaining further information in addition to the video which you know it's easier in a comment section to say thanks for watching i do that a lot thanks for watching thanks for the comment which for me just feels a bit, you know, 
going through the motions, whereas I could do something different. Um, maybe something that generates more debate. I don't know, more interaction. Is is there? I mean, you don't have to share it with us, but but would you be willing to sort of have a little look on a on a video and see if there's a comment? I suppose what we're looking for is somebody who you think it has got, has kind of gone a couple of millimeters closer to being interested and yeah, uh, sure. you know potential client territory potential student um student territory yeah sure a sec um comments here we go so um i've got one got a couple here so great lesson andy thanks again i also love this tune i just think three four tunes are my faves always been a big bill evans fan um mm. now <laughs> youtube suggests what to put rock on mine too same here I, you know and if i was being <laughs> lazy <laughs> i could use one of those i wouldn't um so there's an example there and he's commented on my videos quite a few times mm -hmm um what do you know about him already he often comments on videos i do about songs so some of my videos are about technique or they might be about improvisation different concepts and things mm. like that he often comments on ones i do about songs um i've got another comment up here um i really like the a harmonic minor as for the melodic minor scales my ear is not used to them yet dash 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 which dot 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 sorry which obviously indicates mm. he wants something more from me right okay so we both of those could be useful things you know useful conversations to kind of go with mm. which which one seems like the most uh likely to sort of well not likely but which one would you like to sort of talk about i think the the first one because it's it's one of the one that's this kind of easier for me just to put something quite banal I like I would put something like great tune yeah I agree Bill Evans is you know is the man or something you know it's um it's something I wouldn't know what necessarily to do to try and maybe mm. take like you say if you're talking about someone going on a journey with you to being mm. someone that shows an interest in what you do to being you know a, a client mm -hmm. um how do we go from here to there and even in that comment section you know I'm sure there's ways I could no, yeah. That. yeah, yeah, sure. Um, re read the question out again. Uh, sorry, the um, not the a question, comment. really. It's just the, a comment. comment. Yeah, you yeah. Just said, um, great lesson, Andy. Thanks again. I also love this tune. I just think three, four tunes are my fave. Uh, always been a big Bill Evans fan. Right. Okay. So, so it's not a question, is it? It's not a question. It's just some positive feedback and and some yeah. So, so so that so um, great lesson um it sounds like they've watched it and they may have even you know played along and used it you know actually made use of it so they've already been served um so there there are i mean like anything i'm saying now i'm not saying that just by writing it, it's going to guarantee that someone's you know obviously going to mm. want to be in the conversation but but the fact that they've kind of commented means that they, they, they kind of crossed the little threshold which means they're prepared publicly yeah to be seen to be engaging with it so so what when when it's when people get to that kind of stage i'm always curious to know uh you know number one like what specifically they found useful just because it's interesting to know so so what i would maybe do is go you know i'm, I'm, I'm really glad you've enjoyed the lesson mm. um which bit did you find the most useful in, in this one you know and then and then they then you know they can say end up saying something like okay well actually that that thing you said about this that was really good um you know and then it's like okay well what you know is that something that you're particularly working on oh mm -hmm. yeah it is actually that's you know, okay, okay cool um you know if you drop me an email um to this address i've got um a, a little uh clip that i can share with you that, that will be perfect for that you know, so you can kind of you can kind of take their expression of interest mm. and you can kind of like kind of coax out of them uh you know what it is that's had them put their hand up and then see if you can kind of enhance that 
that value or, or kind of take them on to the next tiny little step you know yeah so it's, it's kind of um offering in something also personal as well that's like say off off the main platform mm. of YouTube that's mm-hmm. tailored to them in a sense not necessarily tailored to them in the sense you might not bespokely put something together but it's something like this information will help now yeah you. so you, yeah exactly so so you're one of the things you can't do much with is when when they're just on you know a social media platform or youtube or whatever you, you know you, you where it becomes useful to both of you like really useful is, is when it goes from being you're just the guy on youtube to oh he's a real person who really understands me and yeah. there's an actual relationship so anything that you can do to um invite a real conversation something that really feels personal so email or um you know hop on you know sometimes inviting people to hop on a call with you i mean these these are obvious these are ways to kind of progress the relationship and as long as it's based on service it's not just to have a chat with them mm. and, and you kind of you're clear about that so you know if you, you know is this something you're working on at the moment yeah it is okay well um drop me an email um, I've got something in mind that might be able to help you. Mm. You then get an email and you go, okay, I loved your comment. Thanks for that. Um, you know, I've noticed you've showed up in, uh, in the comments on several of my videos as a thank you. Would you like a, a 30 minute lesson with me? It would be my pleasure sure. to give, to give that to you. And then boom, you're in a conversation. And then, and then it's, it's kind of the nudge maybe for them to go, you know, have you enjoyed this lesson? Yeah, I have. It's been really useful. Okay. Mm. Um, that sounds like a, yeah a good way to try to take it forward i mean i do get people reach out to me and they contact me mm-hmm. for things like i've got a few emails at the minute where people have asked for additional stuff and mm-hmm. you know you could look at that and go hang on a minute this is my time i'm already giving you a lot away for for free essentially mm-hmm. um but i don't think of it like that i i haven't thought of it like that i think of it like there's an individual that likes my stuff and wants some help and i'm happy mm-hmm. to help them um you know when the when the time's right um that that makes sense what about um interesting thing you said there about someone takes that step out and comments on your video because mm. a lot of people i'd say a lot of people watch my videos and don't necessarily comment and um, mm-hmm. say for instance i put a guitar out for sale the other day and i didn't have anything to indicate it was me on my youtube channel or anything and on two places i put it two people commented names i never knew said oh you're you're the jazz guitar from andy guy i love your videos and i just thought why don't you comment on my videos you know what you know you comment on here when i'm trying to sell a guitar i thought it was interesting but take that how do you take that also those those people out there you don't you don't hear from but they do get value out of your content do you know what i mean like you say publicly saying i really Mm -hmm. like this you know maybe because sometimes you know some of the stuff i deal with is quite beginner friendly if you like um not necessarily always i cover advanced stuff too but um i suppose i try and present it as simply as possible and in a way that makes sense for me as well and i think should for others um but i suppose yeah i'm I'm also curious about that getting those that don't comment but do get loads of value out of it because they're just kind of you don't know about them but they're there Mm. yeah yeah um others will experience too yes yeah but then i've i'm guilty of it too i watched a ton of youtube channels particularly news ones where i you know where people comment commentate on the news and i don't ever leave a comment but i would watch a video daily so i'm guilty of that behavior too but why 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 would someone do that you know like you know you, you said guilty but like i, I you know, what why why would someone be guilty of that or why would why would someone well, do, do that you know yeah, well, uh, hmm. I suppose because um, when you really enjoy something by by people and the way they they the way they do things, whatever it is, um, it's nice to show them that you're enjoying it. I think mm. the time they put in and the the quality of what they do. But what, why would why would someone what why, why would it be logical to somebody to not comment but yet they've they have watched your videos i'm thinking about that there will be there will be people out there who have watched your videos who have found them useful and who haven't commented and and i suppose i'm i'm 
inviting you now to kind of get in you know into their mindset in, into their mindset because yeah. because there's something there that the that, that isn't obvious to a lot of people i think uh, i think it's, it's it's useful here there might be something they don't understand you know um because you know when i create a video i i do create it i do try and have you know individuals in mind if you like when i create videos but everyone has a different background with music so you can't do something that just is going to suit everyone uh, so there might be that they there's bits they don't understand they don't feel confident commenting on yeah um so some insecurities about yeah. being, being visible publicly um some insecurity about kind of owning the fact that they're learning still um some insecurity yep. about um uh, or they think they're going to be sold to there might be some insecurity about well um you know i'm i, I trust him enough to kind of test test out his youtube stuff and in secret but i don't trust him quite enough to kind of publicly own the fact that mm. i'm doing that right so so the, 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 there's um you know like, like you said you know you, you've you've had these inbound inquiries about working with you right and and that's that's been most people's experience that they think well that's that's someone who is a potential client they've 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 kind of gone yes i'm interested and and, and that's like the final stage or, or the later stages of a process that's kind of largely invisible mm. you know so 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 what i would offer is that actually there will be people who are watching your stuff and getting value from it and they're, they're nudging closer and closer and closer and what you're trying to do is to um pick up on those subtle signs that they're already moving in that direction so when, so when someone comments that's mm. kind of a commitment it doesn't necessarily mean that they are intending to be your student yet but it is interest it's not intent but it is interest so so expressing an interest is an opportunity to to coach them and, and to to discover more about what they're interested in and to discover more about what they would find really really useful specifically to them in specifically their life and by asking the question and and uh, showing up as a as a professional in other words and you know asking kind of diagnostic questions that that help them become more aware of where they are they they feel reassured by the way that you ask the questions which builds trust mm. and, and actually is is serve it serves them uh you know in, in and of itself um so so what i'm saying is that but the fact they put their they put their hand up sort of metaphorically and you can kind of take that that energy and kind of coax them to would you like this or, you know would this be useful to you so it's not like you're going it's almost like because people tend to think it's term, in terms of like um i'm either going to them to become a client or they're coming to me and and in, and in reality it's a much more subtle kind of play and there's a kind of give and take um there and, and all, all you're testing for is you know how much interest is there you know here's a little bit more would you would that be useful to you oh you know you said this well it sounds like the next step would be well you know you can play chord tones what about an enclosure have you tried that no mm. i haven't what's an enclosure oh well i've got a pdf just for that here's a here's a little thing you might find useful um when you've had a play you know l let me know how you've got on with it and then they'll you know play for a week and come back and go I'm finding it really hard any tips okay yeah drop me an email we can I, i'll give you you know a couple of minutes and we'll have we'll have a chat about it and it just it just deepens like that but it's, it's all based on you kind of coaching them and, and sort of unearthing what they most want what would be serving them and helping and just be relentless to sort of try and do that with every single person that you encounter um and you'll they'll turn into conversations they'll turn into students so it's kind of touch touch points isn't it basically and then how you show up for them and kind of reveal a little bit more but maybe not the full thing it's kind of like a little bit more interaction like you say trust is an interesting word to use with it isn't it really because because um because there's so much free readily readily free information out there now you conceivably you you, you get what well, you do get a lot of people out there that feel they can learn a musical instrument for free 
Um, but then obviously there's still a need for proper instruction and support and facilitating things, especially when it comes to things like technique. Um, but I think you probably have to take that trust to quite a high level for, for some people because of that readily, freely available stuff out there. Mm. So, so, yeah, so, so, so it's a kind of sliding scale. I suppose that's the thing that I'm pointing to here. A lot of people will see it as a black or white thing. Like they're either interested in being my student or they're not. And, and it's, it's not like that at all. It, it's a, it's a, it's a subtle sliding scale and there's no um, certain amount of time it should take. Like this is, yeah. this is pretty much about, you know, if they feel served and they feel ready, and there's a bunch of factors that go into it, but, but by, by the way that you create that relationship with them, basing it around service rather than pleasing them. Um, every time there's a, you know, a comment on a video or every time you design a video, if it's all based around, like deepening relationships and building lifelong relationships with people, then what jet, what then starts to happen is you get more people kind of, uh, you know, on a in a conversation with you, which then turns into a lesson, a one-to-one -one lesson. Um, I've filled my coaching practice like that, like through comments. That's, that's basically how I sign up clients. That's how I, I run my business, um, which is basically serving, conversations and then uh, you know we we come to a, an agreement and then we decide to work together some of those people end up working in, in group programs so we have a conversation about whether they'd like to join a group program some of them it's only one-to-one -one. some of them it's you know it's shorter term some of them it's longer term um but it's it's based on there being a relationship I, you know some people will, will say about you know needing to make a lot of noise on social media and having a certain website but what i would assert and this is what it says in the book as well is that um basing it on service means that you'll you'll build a really strong word of mouth reputation you'll get a lot more referrals mm. from people because they because they really feel connected they really feel yeah impacted by you you know i think what you're saying there hits the nail well nail on the head for one of a better expression in the sense that for me, it's like, well, I've got these videos, got these people that watch them. Over here, I've got a website which has a contact form for lessons, and I've got some products for sale. And there's nothing in between. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just like, well, other people have found me, and I've got quite a good number of students through it, definitely, and good long-term students that I work with, and we have really good working relationships. Um, I think the thing with what I do and things important to me and I think for, for people engaging with someone whether it be for music tuition coaching whatever it is is just being authentic and when it comes to music tuition there's tons of stuff out there where it's like the new method the some secret way of doing something and I, I, I don't like anything particularly like that because I just think it's generally kind of nonsense you know some sort mm. of magic way of you know learn the guitar in a day or the magic way to learn jazz guitar the secret formula or or something for me my approach is kind of like um it's realistic and pragmatic which mm -hmm. you know it, on on the sense of building that relationship it takes longer i think than you know some some marketing thing which is is going to say um i don't know learn to improvise in 30 days or something you know whereas well, what I, what I would add is because um, that's I, I love the fact that you said that because that you I, I think I think there's there's a lot of value in in really but well, it's fundamental, isn't it? Like really being yourself and really being authentic. And I know people who are authentic, but they they shy away from leading the sales interaction. They they shy away from progressing the service based yeah. relationship. And, and specifically, you know, like, like the gap you referred to. The, the, there are what well, certainly what how it looks to me is that there's there's more options available than just them coming to you on a on a in, inbound you, you have the option of picking up on the subtle buying signals mm. and, and saying to them ah so you've so you've enjoyed this would you like this as well 
um, okay, yeah, okay, good. Oh, and would you, now that you've used that, would you like a conversation about it? Oh, yes, I would, please. Thank you very much. Okay, now we've had a conversation. Uh, would you like further conversations? Oh, yes, how much does it cost? Oh, actually, it costs £100 a lesson or, you know, whatever it is that you charge, you know. Um, you know, so some chops when it comes to, uh, you know, leading those cell interactions. And then, you know, you work out how much time you have to develop to, uh jazz guitar teaching mm -hmm. and you have those conversations and and have those interactions until your practice is full yeah. and then and then when the demand has been built um you uh you know if there's more people than there is space to teach them then you you nudge your prices up or you build group programs that, that caters to for more people because there's a demand based on how much of a uh, how how much service you've offered people that's all it is. That's yeah. all this is, really. It's quite simple when you put it like that. It's just, it's just having the confidence sometimes, I think, to, to take that next step. Because with YouTube and things like that, you can kind of hide behind a video. Like things I've not done yet that I probably need to push myself to do is a live stream. Or like, you know, just a guitar hang. You know, we just say it's not necessarily a lesson, but it's just maybe some sort of social gathering with, with subscribers or, or something online. Um, which, again, could deepen relationships um other things i've thought about obviously things like eventually those things like patreon or youtube membership do you do you have any thoughts on things like well, that I, I, what i'd say for now is you know we've spoken a bunch about the comments i I, mm. I would it sounds to me like if you've already got people who are volunteering their interest and, and sort of opening up a relationship that's coming from them I would see what comments you've got, which are there and maybe that have been made in the last few weeks and see if there, because there may be people that you already have that are kind of like low hanging fruit in terms of like they're two or three interactions away from being on a call with you live. Yeah. Having a chat and having a little, you know, you could do a taste the lesson. You could have a talk about what their goals are. Mm. If you, I mean, if you use this group over the next 14 days to kind of, like ask for feedback you know here's a nice juicy comment they seem interested what should i write um you know we can craft something that would be uh useful i mean you you could do a, you could you could create some students in the next 14 days using mm. these kind of organic uh methods i would start there because everything else is kind of more of a arm's length kind of yeah, marketing you're right. kind of thing um then, then there are people who are already trying to get a little bit closer but they maybe don't know how to they don't have enough information maybe to kind of realize that they could be a, a student you know sound doable it does sound doable nick it does it's just making things i'm just thinking through things and sort of i can see yeah missed opportunities when people have written things or uh, i suppose just being creative with it maybe a bit more like it's easy to get into a rut with how you work and like I say, it could be quite lazy with just a polite comment. Cheers for watching the video. Thanks for commenting. Good mm -hmm. to see you here again. I write things like that all the time, but I could think a little bit differently. Um, but, so yeah, so so you use use the group. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like make use of the group. Po do a screenshot. Post it in the group. Ask a question like, "What you, what would you do next?" And tag me in it, and and we can have a little conversation that can help. I've done that with clients a lot, especially when it's you know, sort of a new thing to, to, to be doing. So don't be afraid of asking loads of questions like that. I'll do my best to respond to all of them. So Cool. That's great, Nick. Thanks. That's, that's, I think looking forward to all of it, really, and just, just starting to, like I say, challenge myself a bit more about mm. how, I, how I approach things. Mm. Yeah, I no, good. It's good for thing. you, man. Um, anything that you want to say to the group or don't think so other than just look forward to getting to know some of you um i've seen a few of you have commented already introduced yourselves and one guy did a video earlier which was cool um just looking forward to seeing because i'm sure there's probably other similar things um that i'm experiencing or things i can maybe mm -hmm. even chime in with as well but yeah. just looking just open to just learning and just just doing maybe just thinking about things a bit differently and i think just the book it kind of i feel like i already do that kind of creating value in terms of the way i think about how i engage with people but it's just being a bit smarter about how i do it to like you say to lead somewhere 
and and it's not like even still if if it's a monetary thing at the end of it that that's cool but um genuinely for me it is like just i really enjoy helping others learn and and progress on the guitar um so i wouldn't see that as a like i say there's an email in my inbox at the minute from a guy who wants some help with how to to play with some changes you know that could be oh i can't be bothered to reply to that you know it's it's not going to bring me any money necessarily right now um but i'm keen to you know think about how i can maybe deepen that relationship and take that mm. that client to the next step cuz um yeah it's it yeah it's exciting i'm really looking forward to this these next next two weeks nice one cool me too um thank you um what i would say to everybody else watching uh, please do for each of these coaching videos put your comments in the um in, in the comment section so just like share what you're noticing that's useful for you um not not so much about like kind of giving critiques of, of anybody's uh you know what they're doing but more, more about like make it about you what you, what have you noticed that's useful for you by watching this session um because like you said andy like there's, there's, there'll, there'll be things that um Will, will come up for all of us and that is common ground so it's a chance for all of us to reflect um so yeah so that's that's our that's the first um coaching session there'll be, there'll be more coming um soon tomorrow um and more news later so lovely to meet you and um, see you soon all right cheerio, cheerio. bye, bye. Everyone.